Hello, and welcome back. Today we're talking about some quick tips on caring for your plants during the winter time. If you are like me and live on the East Coast, Northern Hemisphere, and your days have gotten shorter and colder, then you might be struggling to keep your plants as happy and as thriving as they were during the summer months. Now, you're not gonna be able to recreate summer because it's just not summer, but we can do a couple of things to make sure that our plants are a lot happier as we go through these cold, dark months while we wait for the bright, warm days of summer. So, let's discuss those now. So let's talk about humidity first. In the winter time, the air is just super dry and there's not much we can do about that. You'll probably feel it in your skin and in your hands as well, in your hair. The air is just super dry and that air leaks into your house. So to combat that because no plants, well, that's not true, but most indoor plants are tropical plants and they prefer, prefer a higher humidity. In my favorites video, I talked about this new humidifier that I recently got that has this dual nozzle and you can see it's spinning out tons of mist. And hand in hand with that, I also have this little thermometer that tells me the current temperature and the current humidity levels in this space. So right now, even with all of this happening, I'm only at 45% humidity and that's because windows are drafty and some of that dry air will leak in and some of your humid humidity will leak out. So be sure that you are getting as much humidity as possible in the area where your plants live. You can up it by getting a bigger humidifier, getting multiple humidifiers. You can even leave bowls of warm water, um, trays, you know how um, people do those pebble trays so the plants sit on a bed of pebbles that you keep water around. but Water, 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 not in the plant, but water, water, water in terms of creating a humid environment will keep them much happier through the colder, drier winter months. Now let's talk about location a little bit because it kind of goes hand in hand with our water and our upcoming topic, light. I have said many times about our plants in this apartment that we only have this one big window here really providing the only natural light to this space and the plants live over our heating source for this room. Now that means two things. I want my plants to be closer to the window because I want them to get as much light as possible, but it also means that they're living over a dry, hot source, which means that their soil can certainly dry out a lot faster than it would be if, even though it's winter time, they were living in a different spot. So when it comes to location in your home for your plants during the winter time, you want to move plants as close as possible to the window. Those plants that were maybe living on a table or living just a few feet further away from the window, you probably wanna move them a little bit closer to take advantage of as much sun as possible. You can always move them back in the spring, but right now you wanna make sure that they're catching as much of the sun's rays as possible. Also, take note of where your heating source is in the room. Is it blowing directly on your plants? Can you protect them in some way? And how will that affect the soil staying moist? And how will that affect your humidity? All of these things need to be taken into account for wintertime plant care. And do what you can to protect your plant and keep it as far away from a hot heating source as possible, protect it as well as possible, and as close to the window as possible. And now light. There's nothing we can do because the earth and the sun and science, the days are shorter. There's nothing we can do about the sun. But what we can do is once we've moved our plants closer to the window so that they get as much of that sun that they possibly can, we can fill the gap of the missing sun with some grow lights. Now, grow lights can be very expensive and if you're willing to invest, you totally can. The cheaper alternatives can also be really not that cute. Um, so I have come up with a smart, mostly attractive solution to some grow lights. And so let's get into this very quick DIY. So for this cheap and easy DIY grow light, you're going to need a smart 
plug outlet. You're going to need a hanging pendant lamp cord, and you're going to, of course, need your grow light bulb. All of these items are found really inexpensively on Amazon and will, of course, be linked in the description below. Now, I am choosing to wrap my pendant cord in macrame cord because I just want it to be a bit more aesthetically pleasing. So I started by gluing the cord down, wrapping over the part that I glued, and I found that wrapping got the cord really tangled. So I would just, I ended up cutting a piece, wrapping, and then I would glue the end down and then start my new wrap on top of the glued down piece. And on the end, when I was done, I just used a, um, I'm not sure what it's called, a loop, the like macrame pull through the loop kind of finisher. But this, I'm not saying that you have to do it this way. This is just what worked for me. But it just made the cord that much nicer because we're going to hang it on the hanging plant rod that we installed. And if you are interested in seeing that video, I will link it here. The DIY that we installed is both good for plants and curtains, but who needs curtains when you have plants? So here's Sean, just gonna loop the macrame cord around and around and around. And then we're gonna plug the smart outlet into the extension cord that we have in this corner. And then we're just gonna plug the lantern cord into the smart plug and boom, we have a DIY grow light, a smart DIY grow light. So to make your light a really smart device, you have to start by downloading the, I'm going to call it Gozman because I'm not sure how to pronounce it, the Gozman app. So you're going to download the app. It will of course ask you to create a username and password, very standard, connect your smart outlet to your Wi-Fi so that you can then use it on your phone. And once you've done all of that, you can use your phone to turn anything you plug into this outlet on and off directly from your phone. You can make the light further smart if you have an Alexa or a Google Home device by adding the Goldsman skill to the Alexa app. That's what we have. Add the Goldsman skill, and then you'll be able to use Alexa to also turn it on and off. While in the Goldsman app, you can also set a schedule for your outlet, which you can see that I'm doing, and I have my light scheduled to come on at five o'clock and go off at nine o'clock every day. And that is exactly what it does. And if I wanted to, I could also tell Alexa to turn it on or turn it off. Now, if you like me find figuring out how much water your plants need, especially in the winter time, very tricky, then you would benefit just like I do from a moisture probe. In the summer months when the sun is at its full strength, we know that your plants need a lot more water because the soil will dry out a lot faster. But now that we're not getting as much sun and the air is a lot drier, how do we know when our plants really need that water? That weekly watering schedule from the summertime just probably won't cut it anymore. So a moisture probe is a good way to keep a handle on how much water your plants actually need. So to use your moisture probe, you really just take it, stick it in the soil, and take a reading of how wet or dry your plant is. This one is telling me that it is a, it's registering a one. So that baby is pretty dry and could use a water. The more often you do this for your plants, the faster you'll realize when they need water. You can also, as a shortcut, just pick up the pot and see how heavy it feels. If it's really light, then you know that it probably needs some water. Now, I hope these few tips will make you feel 
more prepared to care for your plants this winter. Be sure to move them as close to the window as possible. Get that moisture probe or pay attention to how much water they need and how often you're watering. Be sure to protect them from the heating source in your space. And if you're into that quick little cheap DIY, get a grow light. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.